What an incredible hour with Jerry West, Marshall Falk. What an incredible cool. hour and a privilege to have Jerry so West cool. here That's on fun. the set. This is a good day. It's a Hall of Fame Central day. Yeah. We have a Hall of Famer in Jerry West. We have a Hall of Famer in Ed Reed calling in. We have a Hall of Famer in Marshall Falk. I'm Susie Schuster. I'm a Hall of Famer in my own eyes. And then we have another Hall of Famer in Les Snead, who I refer to as Mr. Kara Henderson. So we want to thank Les Snead from the <laughs> L.A. Rams coming into the studio. You're not even you're not even smiling at that. No, that's a, I think that's a that's a Hall of a Famer, very right there. appropriate <laughs> surname, no, nickname. Too. What yeah, kind of name? That's a Hall of Fame response to your wife, by the way. Oh no doubt. Because we know who runs if, the if ship in this family. If there's any Hall of Fame I get into, it's because of her. Yeah. There's no doubt. Now no. I am in uh, I'm in the Wiregrass Hall of Fame. You are? Yeah. Google that and see if you can find it anywhere. Wow. It's a little part of pocket of Alabama. Uh-huh. Like, let's call it the southeast corner of Alabama, the Wiregrass. So, okay. That's probably as. Marshall, that's you look probably really the only impressed. Hall of Fame I'm ever I, getting I, yeah, to. Listen, man, you make any Hall of Fame count. I'm right. just saying. But you it's, look really it's, Wiregrass. It's, I mean, it's, I, yeah, I, I, I not heard of that. Mm-hmm. I'm from the South. There right? has been some good football players from the Wiregrass. There you go. Tell us. Yeah, give, who? Us, yeah. give us some names. Good. I'm trying to let me see if I can think of the best Less need. football. I, here's a good one, Marshall. And this is a, he's actually from my hometown. A guy named Walter Reeves. Walter Reeves. Okay, that's probably before your time. And he, he basically played a decade probably with the Arizona Cardinals. Tight end. You know why I bring up Walter Reeves? Why? In those days, best blocking tight end. But do you know what he did? A guy did? named Frank Thomas couldn't beat him out in football. So he decided I'm going to go focus on baseball. Wow. Mm. It worked okay. out for him. Now, I'm not sure that's why. I think Frank, I remember Frank him. Frank ended up playing baseball, but I do know this. Frank backed up Walter yeah. Reeves at Auburn I University. think I remember him. Didn't he play from like 88 to 96, right? Don't I remember him? 89 yeah, I mean, I, to 96? I forget the date, the, 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 the years, but... By the way, uh, I've got Don Bowie talking in my ear. Don't I sound like I really know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and they, and they, blocked, from they blocked from Jerry West to Walter Reeves. He did block Jackson for Jackson was a running okay. back, yeah. This is Look at that. Like, That's a good fact. Hey, man. Look, if you have a Crack Hall of Fame. Like, staff, they'll find it. You have to use it. Any kind of Hall of Fame you can possibly use. You Any use kind it. of Hall of Fame. This is what I do, the Brian it's Gumbel. Hard. Ready? This is the Brian Gumbel transition. That's when you take off your glasses, and you look down, and you look over. And that's when you transition. So uh, this is when I say, like, Les, so last night, uh, the San Francisco 49ers, now 8-0 in the season. You know what that feels like from last year as they are atop the NFC West. What are your thoughts on that team that you saw playing last night? That I, interestingly, right, it probably selfishly need, needed to pull against them. Uh, so because of Halloween, I remember it being 7 nothing Arizona, uh, got into uh, bye week, some Halloween stuff, picked up the game, saw the it was a, it was a nice, fun finish. Uh, definitely would have liked to see Arizona get the ball back. But I've been impressed with uh, San Francisco, even even the previous two years when they had quarterback injuries. And they, they were a, a very, very tough out with with whether it was Nick Mullins or, or C.J. Beathard. So you, you've you seen this group building over the last two years and, and knew if, if they got the QB thing stabilized, added some pieces on defense. What you like about what they did is uh, they stayed the course. They believed in what they were doing. And uh, last year, maybe defense was a problem for them. Now it's a strength for them based on developing players they drafted and then added in a few veterans key places uh talk about the complexities of of being a gm in today's league um uh, you guys make moves you 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 bring guys in you make trades you you know it, it it's always moving you you don't you you really don't just get to hunker down and say this is our team what, what what's so different nowadays than say you know Five ten years ago, it, it's a, GM, right? We're always thinking short term, long term. But if we answered that question, you go. When I first got into the league as an entry level, whatever, right? Picking up anyone from the airport uh, uh, that we brought in in Jacksonville, and in those days with the Jacksonville Jaguars, it was an expansion team. So it seems like we brought in new people every <laughs> single week. So <laughs> that was an interesting job. But the free agency had just begun. In, had just began then. So, and in those days, it was new. So, we actually, I remember we've got, we got Bryce Pop, we got Leon Searcy, we got really good players from other teams, and they were UFAs and their contract expired and they 
came to Jacksonville. Then you saw where teams said, you know what, we're going to keep our core players. A little bit harder for pillars of other teams to get the free agency, whether with the franchise tag or with uh, you know redoing contracts early. I do think uh, the advent of the when the when we went with the new rookie compensation system uh, in the last CBA, where uh, there was a time when teams didn't want to pick early in the draft. Mm-hmm. Based on you were picking an unknown player that obviously had potential to develop into a really good player but wasn't there yet, but you were paying that player as one of your probably top one, two, three, or four or fifth player on your team based yeah. on where he was drafted. So I think eliminating that aspect of the compensation for rookies allowed you know teams more willing to uh, you know trade, want to trade for early picks and things like that. So there's a lot of variables like anything. I think uh, as I was sitting backstage, Jerry West mentioned it, right? <laughs> the games, whether it's basketball, football, soccer, f- baseball, it's changing and evolving rapidly. How about how about how you evaluate uh, in in the first round? If you're picking one through ten, you look at it a certain way. How about when you're you're picking on the back end? You know, you have those last five, six, seven picks of the first round. Do you evaluate it as a? It, it, do you look at it as first round still, or or is it? How, how do you how do you evaluate it? I think in. I, here's here's how we do it. I, I do think there's a subset of players each year, probably depending, and it's all based on when they were born and when they when they choose to come out of school, whether it's as a redshirt sophomore, true junior, or stay in their senior senior year. Uh, there is this in each draft, whether it's five, ten, twelve. There's there's a subset of number of players who may be uh, physically just more gifted than the rest. Again, that number it changes every year, again, based probably on who was born when and when they decide to come out of school. I do think what we have found, uh, late first, middle of the first, late, somewhere in there, depending on the year in the draft, uh, that if you let your mathematicians and your analysts uh, really you know, regress analysis and, and study, those players probably are very similar to players you can get in the second round as well. So it, in each year, it may be it may be 30 guys where pick 20 through uh, 50 or, or very similar mm-hmm. in in mom, dad, God given ability, and all of them are going to be good football players. And and then and then there's a little bit of a cliff. And may, but you're seeing, I would say this, just to sum it all up: late first, second round, even into the third some good football players come out of those uh, uh, rounds. And that's last year while when we had a first-round pick, uh-huh. we may have had three picks, two or three picks in the top 100. Our strategy was, if we could, move back from our late first-round pick and keep moving back so that we could end up with maybe five picks in the top 100 uh, instead of two. When you um – this is and I've been I've been contemplating this. I speak on it from an example. Is it harder to GM once you've given the quarterback that hundred plus million compared to beforehand? We're just starting that, so I'll be able to answer that better in a couple of years. Uh, here's the the positive of it is as a franchise. You've found a QB that you feel like can lead your franchise at that position. And I, like, I try to stay away from franchise QBs and what mm-hmm. tier they are. But that that person, that position is very important to figure out uh, for the short and long term. So the positive is you've obviously found that. And also the positive is once you do that contract, that's an anchor point. So it does help you manage the future uh, a little bit easier in that you know how much money you have in that position. Now you have to figure out uh, where you're going to allocate the other resources. And that's based on position, but more importantly, based on, I call it, the human beings playing that position. 
right? I always I like to say it in our building. The positions are really just two letters in the alphabet, right? Mm -hmm. RB is just two letters. But if you're running back is Marshall Falk and he threatens the opposing defense, opposing defenses are trying to figure out each week how to stop you, whether it's running, catching, and you're scoring touchdowns, you know what? Uh, Marshall Falk, that position is a pillar of our team and we need to make sure we keep that person long term. So that's that's the positive of paying the QB. Less need here on the Rich Eisen Show alongside Marshall Falk. I'm Susie Schuster. Let's talk about Daryl Henderson, no relation, of course, that you drafted. Uh, led the team with carries 11 yards, 20 carries against the Bengals in London. How are you seeing him develop? I think the last couple games, last three weeks, he he has played more. So anytime you, the game is starting to slow down for him, uh, you know, and that's just natural course. So uh, I think we'll see more and more of him and, you know, both running the football and catching the football. But uh, what we do know is when he does have space, uh, he's proven to be an explosive player. Uh, he can break tackles and he can he can gain yards at a, you know, a fast rate. And it's imp it's important in today's league to have two guys that you can count on in the backfield. You I mean, when I played, it was like, if you were the back, you were the back. Uh, right. I can remember Mike Marsh would call timeouts if I came out of the game and it was an important situation. But in today's league, it is, it is, it's huge. You have to have multiple guys back there who can, who can get it done. Oh yeah, and I think there, the, hey, different flavors back there also, uh, and sometimes when you call it change of pace, can definitely. You know, a defense can prepare for one player, and then a, we've always seen it, right? Nicknames Thunder and Lightning. When when there's these dynamic mm -hmm. duos that that you know earn those nicknames based on their play, uh, but I think the different styles of whatever the runner brings in his style of play uh, definitely can help as well. How about how about a young guy that surprised you? Young guy surprised you. I I, you, I think. Uh, in the, let's just take the our, one of our youngest from this year's draft class, uh, uh, Dave Edwards out of Wisconsin. And, and he, he was very impressive from the beginning. Again, a Wisconsin lineman comes in knowing how to play the game. Vervage is very similar. So your NFL playbook is is not foreign. Uh, it, you know, it's not a spread system there. But he was, you know, he was a right tackle uh at uh, Wisconsin, actually went there. It's a high school QB, tied in wow. to, to right tackle. Uh, because of Joe Noteboom's injury, we inserted him in as the you know starting left guard for the last two weeks. And in, in those two weeks, we've played uh, Grady Jarrett, Geno Actons, that he's had to go against and has performed admirably. So I'll give, I'll give it. That's a nice, very late yeah, it is. surprise <laughs> for fifth round pick. Interestingly, probably in one of the Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay's way too early uh, mock drafts that comes out probably the day after the draft for, for next year. There was probably three offensive linemen from Wisconsin uh, that were in the first round. He was one of them, but did play his, his last year at Wisconsin with an injury. So didn't, didn't play as well, so that affected his draft stock. I put on my glasses. I shortchanged Daryl Henderson. That happens. See, I shifted back down. Well, to you know, Thursday. it's okay. interesting. Y'all know Kara well. She's very smart, very witty. She's at home right now saying, no, no, no. It's she did the tee up a nice I know her. tweet. Uh -huh. And I think it was based on uh, the the New Heart show, like something to do. This is my brother Daryl and Daryl. You remember my the other three brother Darryl. brothers Daryls? <laughs> so whatever her tweet with, I mean, and you know Artist Twyman, so our director of PR, yeah. he was he was going, no way, no, no, you can't do it. Artist very conservative, <laughs> probably hasn't totally evolved to the new you know, LA culture. You know wh whatever goes on in that Twitter space, but it was it was very uh, witty, dynamic tweet that he cut off. But. Plus, I went to Columbia. There's no math requirement. I never talk numbers. I mean, I ought to just like stay in my lane. I'm like realizing. Uh, I'm like, put your glasses no on. Math stay in your lane. No math requirement. That's why I got in. What? Yeah, a recommendation from Bob Kraft too. But that that's that's another story. Let's Not talk about Jalen Ramsey. Can be engineers. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's talk about Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. So nobody goes to there's jail. A lot, there's a lot there. 
Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. there. So let's talk about the acquisition of Jalen Ramsey oh, yeah. and, and trading away a team to leave. What do you we didn't start with that you. was low hanging fruit, man. I, we were going to uh, get to that eventually. That's what's good this about is, this show. I, I, I like that. I, I, like this is just friendly parts, fire less. Yeah. yeah, this is. There's parts I of your job. I could come back here. This yeah. is a fun show. You're, there's there's parts of your job that people don't understand. So I just wanted to get into like what you have to go through mentally to be a general manager. People just think you like this is the team. That's it. Like there's a lot that goes into the work that you guys have to do. And I mean the Jalen Ramsey trade. It just that 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 was That's evaluating. That's what we call a pivot in the you know, industry. You, you have a need. That's a pivot. You, you have a need, and, and and there's a guy out there that can make your team better. You know, and that's that was. And also, and this is what you we deal with as general managers, and and I, what's required in the job. We did know coming into this year that okay, we we have a situation at corner where we've got two players that are. You know, gonna they're in the final year of their contract, mm-hmm. so you're you're always you're not just waiting till the end of the season to see how it goes and whether you resign them or, or not to to figure that out. So last year, uh, when we drafted David Long in the third round, we did realize there's probably going to be a corner from last year's draft based on how how good it was probably in the front seven it was going to push corners back and i forget whether when the first corner got drafted but it was probably in the late 20s which normally doesn't happen in a draft so and when we another player that is starting for us are is daryl williams i mean out of uh, darius williams out of uh, uab we had liked him in the previous draft he made baltimore's team was cut uh last year and we claimed him but we were, we were always trying to add these young talented corners in preparation for what might happen at our corner position mm-hmm. but with Jalen Ramsey he was never discussed right no one's the Jacksonville Jaguars is not trading Jalen Ramsey but all of a sudden there is an opportunity there like wait a minute Jalen Ramsey uh, uh, is possibly available should should the Rams you know, take advantage of this opportunity. So you're always having to adjust when uh, new opportunities that you're not planning for arrive. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.